Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. Let's get started. This is a toxicology case, but I promise you there will be no images of metabolic pathways and I'll try to use the word metabolite as little as possible. It's a 33-year-old female with a history of depression. She's here with suicidal ideation. She reports taking 20 ounces of ethylene glycol daily since mid-June in an attempt to, quote, kill her kidneys. She already knows more about toxicology than I do. She reports taking 20 ounces this morning initially, but after the H&P she admits to the resident, she took much more. Here are her vitals. Temperature is 36.9, heart rate of 109, blood pressure of 138 over 102, breathing 28 times a minute, setting 100% on room air. Initially, the patient was walking and talking. She admitted to drinking way more than that 20 ounces of ethylene glycol, and then over her ED course, she became progressively more lethargic and was intubated for airway protection. And here are her lab values. Things I want to draw your attention to is this anion gap is elevated at 22. Calcium, the ionized level is low at 4.4. She's acidotic at 7.24 with a low PCO2 concerning for a metabolic cause. Her osmolality, her measured is 301 and calculated as normal. Uh, at our hospital, 300 is the highest limit of normal. And her lactate is 7.6. This is bad, right? Look at all those red arrows and double exclamation points. You know this is bad. Her lactate is 7.6 and her ethylene glycol level is 80. Do you know what's normal? Zero. You should have no ethylene glycol in your system. So what is ethylene glycol? It's a toxic alcohol. It's used in antifreeze and causes an anion gap, metabolic acidosis, as well as an elevated osmolal gap. But, like we saw here, this may not be present because only the parent compound increases the osmolal gap. But the metabolites are deadly. So this is where we get into trouble. Ethylene glycol is broken down into oxalic acid. This binds calcium, which is why the calcium is low in our patient and causes renal toxicity. Other metabolites, glycolic and glycoxylic acid, this is what give you that big anion gap acidosis. And now, while lactate is one of the metabolites, it can be falsely elevated due to your lab thinking glycolic acid is actually lactic acid. So what are the clinical stages of ethylene glycol intoxication? Stage one is your acute neurologic stage. They're drunk. This acts just like an ethanol intoxication. Now in large amounts, you can have seizure or coma. Stage two is the cardiopulmonary stage. This happens about 12 to 24 hours post ingestion. And now these can all sort of be happening in congruence. These time frames aren't set. You have mild hypertension, tachycardia, and myocardial depression. Stage three is your renal stage. It happens about 24 to 72 hours post ingestion. This is when you have your calcium oxalate crystals forming, you have hematuria and proteinuria, and you have acute tubular necrosis. This is why you need that dialysis. And then stage four, the delayed neurologic sequela stage, or the not my problem stage in the emergency department acutely. This is six to 12 days post-ingestion. You can have cranial neuropathies, and these all were associated with previous renal failure. And actually, any neurological finding can be related. So what's the treatment? Two ways to treat. You have to stop the metabolism of the ethylene glycol, and that's done with fomepazole. 15 mg per kg as an IV load, and this blocks alcohol dehydrogenase. And for symptoms of ethylene glycol intoxication, or for levels greater than 20 without symptoms are the recommendations. Now, if you don't have fomepazole, you can use straight ethanol to overcome al alcohol dehydrogenase, but fomepazole is the preferred treatment. And now we stop the metabolism, we have to remove that parent alcohol, as well as any remaining metabolites and that's done with dialysis. This patient's hospital stay, toxicology was involved, renal was involved because she was started on dialysis. She went to the MICU and then she ended her hospital stay with a psychiatric visit. So what are our take home points? The metabolites are dangerous, all right, both with acidosis and kidney injury. The clinical stages of ethylene glycol intoxication, acute neurologic stage is stage one, cardiopulmonary stage, the renal stage, and then the delayed neurologic sequelae stage. You gotta know how to treat it. Block the breakdown of the parent compound with fomepazole, and then treat the removal of the parent compound and the metabolites with dialysis. This was a great case from one of my co-third years, J. Max Slaughter. Thank you guys for listening, and keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.